This video is the third out of four videos from my How to Flat Toe a 4 Bronco series. In this video, I'll be installing the Blue Ox BX8848 taillight wiring kit to my sixth generation 4 Bronco, the connector out of the BX8806 coil cable, as well as a trickle charge wire so the Bronco's battery doesn't die while being towed for a prolonged period of time. If you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend it because it provides a broad overview of everything required to make the 4 Bronco flat towable. The link to that, all the parts I used, the schematic I created to go along with this video, and the next video are all in the description. With that, let's get started. The diode wiring kit connects your tow vehicle's taillights to the Broncos, so that when you step on your brakes or flip your turn signals, the Bronco mirrors those actions. Because we're doing electrical work, it's wise to disconnect the positive terminal of the battery so nothing gets shorted out. First, the taillights of the Bronco will get removed so we can run the wiring loom and splice the diodes in. Start by unscrewing the four plastic push pins, then gently pop them off with a trim pry bar. Next, this plastic trim sheath beneath the tail light needs to get removed. It's held on with two large clips here, and takes a good amount of wiggling and patience. I found it's easiest to actually start near the fender arches, undoing a few fender clips, gently prying the trim piece out, then proceeding to the other side to pop off the two large clips. The instructions say to remove this particular 10mm bolt before the trim gets removed, but I learned the hard way that you can ignore this step for now. This bolt is almost impossible to reach without removing the trim first. With the trim gone, three 10mm bolts get removed, followed by the plastic shroud. Remove these two 8mm bolts, followed by this larger 10mm bolt holding the taillight assembly in place. The taillight is now only attached by the wiring harness. Repeat this on the other side. The next step would ordinarily be a lot of fun because you'd have to identify which wire does what, since the instructions don't go so far as to be specific for the Bronco. But I've already done this work, and here's the schematic for it. I'll also leave a link in the description for it. If you do need to identify what is what, the way I attacked this was I disconnected this black six-pin connector from the taillight assembly, and then probed each pin with a multimeter while my wife was in the driver's seat cycling through the brake lights and taillights. I spliced all the necessary wiring between the black connector and the gray connector. There is not a whole lot of wiring lead here, so it's unfortunately not very forgiving if mistakes are made. The gray wire is the positive 12 volt signal for the tail light, while the blue wire is the positive 12 volt signal for the brake light. Although the Bronco has a yellow turn signal, we will not be wiring to that. When turning, the tail light will be flashing rather than the yellow turn signal when being towed. Starting with the driver's side tail light, I cut the blue and gray wires right in the middle between the black and gray connectors. Then, using my own wires of similar color, I soldered extra length to all of the Bronco's wires, making for a total of four leads. As a result of this, each of the four wires now has about an extra foot of length. Then I crimped and soldered female spade connectors to each of the four leads. I soldered the spade connectors because I didn't have a very good crimping tool, so my connections didn't tend to be very reliable. Blue Ox did provide a bunch of spade connectors, but I wound up needing extras from a car parts store. Ignore the fact that in this photo my wires don't have the extra length. This is before I realized that the diodes don't fit very well into the taillight housing, and this is why I added the extra length in the first place, so I get more flexibility in diode placement. Repeat all of this on the passenger side. And basically, we just completed this portion of the schematic, minus the four conductor cable. Now we really get into the weeds. I took the four conductor cable from the BX8848 kit and I split about six and a half feet of just the green and brown wires off. I should say this, if you have a four door Bronco, I don't know if the cable will reach with six and a half feet removed out of it, so be sure to measure first before cutting. And if it doesn't look like it'll be enough, just use your own green and brown wires here. Then I crimped and soldered the spade connectors to only one end of this new cable and I connected it to the two diodes on the passenger side. Next, I routed the green and brown wires into the body of the Bronco such that I could pass it along the underside. I basically just zip tied it along the rear frame cross member, and at times I zip tied it to other existing cables to secure it. I used reusable zip ties for everything because it leaves room for adjustment if you need it. I routed this cable to the driver's side tail light. I stripped and tinned the tips of the brown and green wires, and I inserted the green wire into a two pole Wago 221 lever jumper and the brown wire into a three-pole jumper. These Wagos work really well for creating a jumper, and you can find them at either Home Depot or Amazon. Then I took an additional small brown wire piece from the cable, gave it a female spade on one end, a tin on the other, 
then put it into the three-pole jumper and to the diode with the gray wire. Here's where we should now be on the schematic. From here, I took the four conductor cable and inserted it through the wheel well to the underside of the car. At this time, I didn't secure it anywhere yet. I split the four conductors apart at the tail light, stripped and tinned them, and wired them as follows. The white wire I crimped and soldered a ring terminal to, and grounded it against this 10 mm bolt on the driver's side portion of the tail light. The brown wire went into the three-pole Wago jumper with all the other brown wires. The yellow wire went into the diode with the blue wire, and the green wire went into the two-pole Wago jumper with the other green wire. To secure the diodes, I put them both on some sticky Velcro tape against the chassis of the Bronco here in a cavity that got revealed by the removal of the tail light. At this point, the wiring in the back of the Bronco should be complete. I used Velcro just in case I needed to replace or reposition any of the diodes. Any buttoning up of the rear should be left until after everything is tested for proper functionality. Next, I removed the skid plate, routed the four conductor cable above the rear cross member, then alongside the brake lines on the driver's side. I made sure to not have it go near the exhaust pipes. There are some conveniently placed clips that hold the brake lines in, which I partially used to secure the cable. Anywhere else where the cable seemed loose, I used zip ties. I brought it all the way to the front of the car, into the engine bay, behind the fuse box, along the front chassis cross member, and then down to the passenger side adapter plate. Then I took my own red 16 gauge wire, soldered a fuse holder in, put in a 10 amp fuse, then connected a ring terminal to the other end of the fuse holder. Later on this ring terminal will go to the positive side of the battery. I added another ring terminal to the black 16 gauge wire which I connected to the negative terminal on the battery. I routed both wires using the same path of the four conductor wire in the engine bay and led them to the passenger side adapter plate. The reason for all this is to trickle charge the Bronco's battery off of the RV when towing, which strangely is neither provided by Blue Ox as parts in these kits or really even mentioned as far as I could find. From here, I needed to find a way to secure the six pin connector from the BX88206 kit to the front of the car. This is where oftentimes you'll see people just cut a hole in their front bumpers and have this ugly connector be up front. But I've said this before, million dollar mug. I refuse to deface this work of art. As such, I decided to secure this connector to the adapter plate's mounting bracket. I don't know if this is affecting the structural integrity of the adapter plate system, so do it at your own risk, and with the understanding that it may void the warranty of the adapter plate. That being said, I have now towed the Bronco for approximately 3,000 miles with no issues. With that boilerplate out of the way, here's the plan. I took these 3-inch nipples from Home Depot, ordinarily used to support ceiling lamps, and inserted a pair of what I believe to be 3.5-inch, 3 8 inch diameter hex bolts through them, as well as the connector. The idea being that this will give the rather long connector enough offset from the adapter plate so that the wires have enough space, and also so that the connector is reachable by me through the bumper. I took the 6-pin connector and made a cardboard template so that I could accurately gauge where to drill the holes in the mounting bracket. I lined up my template and used my center punch to mark where to drill. Two 3 8 inch holes later, and you can see where I'm going with this. A couple of nuts on each bolt with some Loctite will later secure this whole contraption, which is essentially a makeshift standoff. Once you're confident that you'll have enough slack in both the 16 gauge wires as well as the four conductor cable, you can cut strip, then tin the tips of the wires. If you remove the shroud off the connector, be sure to put it on the wires now. Connect all the wires into the screw terminals on the sixth pin connector as follows. Red to pin A, brown to TM, white and black both to GD or ground, yellow to L, and green to R. And now replace the shroud on the connector. I then secured the connector with two nuts per bolt, as well as some Loctite on it so it doesn't vibrate loose. Though I will say, it has vibrated itself loose a little since then, so I'm thinking I either didn't torque the nuts enough, or should have used a lock washer or lock nut. Finally, I secured the red 16 gauge wires ring terminal to the battery, reconnected the battery, and tested the Bronco's lights to make sure they still worked before reinstalling the tail lights. It probably would have been wise to hook my RV up to test the mirroring functionality as well, but at the time I installed all of this, I was already camping, so I got to find out whether everything worked or not the next time I broke camp. Fortunately, everything did work, though I later discovered that using the RV's hazard lights through the Bronco only blink on the passenger side. Not sure yet what to attribute that to, though if I find out, I'll pin a comment or update the description. 
With this rather hairy labor portion out of the way, the only thing remaining is installation of the flat toe braking system, which will also require a bit of wiring and mechanical work, but I'm leaving that for the next and final video in the series. Until next time, thank you for watching.